And um, I think it's really striking to see. They say, I mean, they reduced and they avoided half a billion tons of CO2 in the atmosphere by helping reduce the rate of deforestation. And this, this is how they did it. So they created some new protected areas at the areas where deforestation was expanding. They improved monitoring. They also put some pressure. The civil society put some pressure and then they strengthened the enforcement of the law. So sometimes it's not just about having the law, but it's also about enforcing it. So what it meant is that actually, because uh, Brazil is the one with the biggest patch of um, rainforest, it's very important what happens in Brazil when we talk about climate change. And there's um, the prediction that if Brazil was actually careful about the, defore the deforestation, just Brazil alone eh, could help reduce the global warming 0.15 degrees. So that's why Brazil is a big player in these climate change negotiations, eh, because what they decide to do has a big effect for all of us. So. I said that uh, tropical forests are important when we talk about, yes? Just a curiosity, yeah. how much would the DRC compare, thinking about? I'm going there, wait, wait. Okay. <laughs> we are going there in a minute, okay. yes, yes. So yes, yes. So just before we go to DR Congo, um, I want to talk a little bit about how it's not just that when we cut forests or we degrade forests, we affect the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. It's also important to understand that when the climate change, it also has an effect on the rainforest. And that's what I do. That's why I want to talk about it a little bit. And this is in a study done in the Amazon. And uh, every little arrow here is one hectare plot. So it's kind of a football uh, beach area of forest that people measure every year. And they see how the trees are growing and how some are dying. And we can see, and this is done across the Amazon, and we can see that before 2005, most of the plots that they have been monitoring were losing carbon. Ah, sorry, they were gaining carbon. Eh? The trees were growing, everything was going fine. There's, of course, a few that lose. Maybe there's a big tree that falls and kills quite a few trees, and that's why they lost the carbon they were storing. Eh? But the forest is dynamic. But if we look at the value for the whole of Amazon, they calculated that every year the Amazon stores 0.45 petagrams of carbon before 2005. Eh? What happened in 2005? There was a big drought in the Amazon and a lot, a lot of trees died. So most of the plots they were monitoring lost, the, oh, sorry, lost um, carbon. And if you look at the figure, in one year, 0.9 petagrams of carbon, just because of this drought, went to the atmosphere. So if we go back every year, they gain 0.45. But actually in one year, not only they stopped gaining, they lost twice as much. So it's very important to also study how the forests are reacting to climate change. Because maybe they will not always store carbon as they're doing at the moment. And, um, the climate change does only, sorry, not only affects the carbon, it also affects the species composition of the forest. So this is another study done in Ghana. Same thing, every uh, arrow is a, a patch of uh, one hectare forest that is bon being monitored. And uh, we can see that most of them, actually, I think all of them except one, where except two are growing. The forest is doing fine, so they're accumulating carbon. So they're helping us clean the atmosphere of CO2 during this period. But one needs to be careful because actually during this 20-year uh, gap, the species change, the species composition change because the area is getting drier. So there were more dry adapted species, more deciduous instead of evergreen, and more non-pioneer light demanding. And this has an effect on the long term because these type of species have a wood density that is less thick, so they're softer, so they actually have less carbon. So even if they might look the same in terms of size, they actually their wood is softer. And um, now we go to the question, why the African forests are so important? Because the biggest are Amazon, isn't it? So why are the ones in Africa so important? And this is the answer. It's because per hectare, they store more carbon. So if you look at this figure, uh, sorry that I didn't code it properly. So this is South America forest. 
This is African forest, this is Asian forest, tropical forest, sorry, and this is Australia. And one would say, okay, no, if we look at the figure, the one with more is Australia. That is the important one. Well, yeah, it is important, but you know, guys, they barely have any forest left there. So, even if they have a lot of carbon, the surface of this rainforest is so small that it has a small role in the global carbon cycle. Then next comes Southeast Asia, also high carbon. Same problem, very little left. So that's why it's been gaining interest in what's going on in Africa, because more studies have focused on the Amazon, but now we're starting to get more attention on what's happening in Africa, because actually per hectare we have more carbon in Africa. And just uh, of those that uh, are interested in forests, uh, how come the African forests have more carbon than the Amazon? It's mainly related to the size of the trees. So the trees tend to be the same height, but they're bigger, they're kind of fatter. So we have less number of stems per hectare, you see, 400 something, on average in the Amazon is over 600, but they're bigger. So, um, so that's why it's a little bit different. And of course, there's also differences within Africa. Eh? So the ones in the Congo Basin have more carbon than the ones in uh, West and East Africa. So that's why it's gaining interest what's happening in the Congo Basin, because these are the forests that per hectare have more carbon. So the other thing that is very interesting to think about why the African tropical forests are so important and it's because of two studies, and this study is not published, but it's going to go soon, and it's going to, um, it's a colleague of mine that is working on it, is the fact that uh, the tropical forests of Africa not only are found in drier areas, as you remember from that first figure, they're also more sensitive to temperature. So the relationship, the green one, is the relationship between minimum temperature and carbon in South America, and this is the relationship between minimum temperature and and carbon in Africa. And you can see it follows different directions. So the idea is that actually our tropical forests in Africa might be more sensitive to climate change than those of the Amazon. And another uh, just hint that I want to say just briefly that I put it, I didn't put the graph, is that usually there's a relationship. Areas with more rainfall have more carbon, except to a certain extent. It kind of a, there's a point where more water doesn't help the forests have more carbon. That's why the relationship was positive with the rainfall of the driest nine months. So you don't have a lot of carbon in dry places. The forests, the trees are small and they're not too dense. But when there's too much water also, there's a limitation where it cannot get any more productive. And um, so I think the kind of idea is that when we talk about climate change, the bad news is that as the temperature gets warmer, the trees are uh, the respiration increases. But the good thing is that because there's more CO2, then the photosynthesis also increases. And the idea that of the models that have been uh, run, our the vegetation models that we use to predict future climate changes, they consider these two, and it's still okay. They still predict that the tropical forest will continue to accumulate carbon for a long time. But actually, we are starting to challenge this idea because this might not be true. We already seen from that study that I show you in the Amazon that the, when there was a big drought, a lot of carbon was released in the atmosphere because of all these trees that died. And we are preparing a publication showing the same thing for Africa. And the idea is that this is the, um, the carbon loss, so it is the mortality of the trees, how much goes to the atmosphere when the trees die and then they get decomposed and the CO2 goes back to the atmosphere. The left graph is for Africa, so the, we didn't see a trend until now, but we predict to increase in the future with increasing droughts and climatic changes. And actually in the Amazon, we already start to see a, a trend with an increase in the mortality coming from the study that I showed you before. So I think the idea we need to take uh, home is that um, there was a lot of, um, so I showed you before that the biosphere, especially tropical forests, are helping us keep less carbon in the atmosphere than we are emitting. But the real question is for how much longer? Because if this forest will increase in mortality, then 
we might be accumulating CO2 in the atmosphere faster than we predicted before. So I think the bad news, guys, is that, okay, yeah, tropical forests help us um, reduce the magnitude and rate of climate change. That's why there's so much interest in helping avoid deforestation. But the thing is that to now, we know very little about how the tropical forests react to climate change. So maybe the predictions that we did about climate change for the future are even worse than we predicted just because we didn't take into account how climate change is also affecting the tropical forest. So, any questions up to here? Yeah, you showed that uh, most of deforestation is occurring in Africa. Well, not like Africa, but... In the tropics. Yeah. And then, if we look into Africa, we found that most people who stay in rural areas in Africa depend more in natural resources for food, medicine, and fuel and stuff. So, how do we prevent or reduce deforestation in rural communities of Africa? That's my next slide. So, wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer shortly. <laughs> my probably question is about what you come to say. If one forest, uh, one tropical forest, will disappear or will react to climate, mm -hmm. we don't know what will happen. So, what can we do clearly to conserve forests or may to do what? Mm -hmm. I'd like to know the issue. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good question and I think there's no clear answer but the idea is that if the forest, we already know they're precious, they help us fight climate change. So the straightforward answer would be yes, we need to protect them, especially the tropical forests that have a lot of carbon stored, stored is already there and also they contribute to cycle to reduce how much we throw in the atmosphere. Yes, but my question that I, I uh, so it's hard enough for policymakers to understand that how important are tropical forests. But the idea that I just wanted to throw out there today for you guys was to see that they might be even more important than we thought before, because they they also react to climate change. So I don't know, maybe the guys working in Ghana should start planting the hardwood species to help store more and avoid some of these changes. So I think the idea was, yeah, obviously we need to protect what we have, but maybe it's not enough. But we are going to go there in a second. Yes, I think there's one more question. My question is about the idea of carbon loss when a tree dies, okay? When a tree dies, yeah. yes. Does it uh, mean that when a tree falls down, this carbon is released? Okay, it's a good question, eh? So when a tree dies, the carbon doesn't go in the atmosphere in a second, eh? it's still in the dead wood until somebody burns this dead wood and maybe if you clear for farming you know how they do it, eh? they cut the trees and then they burn them because it's easier to <laughs> plant if there are no trees. So in this case if you burn it goes to the atmosphere immediately. Of course you can also leave it there, that's what they do in logging companies and this that wood, it would decompose slowly, slowly, and eventually, to the decomposition process, the CO2 will go to the atmosphere. But this is a slower, of course. Uh, is it that preventing people from collecting that wood in our forest is going to... To, to help? Yeah. I think it depends what do they do with the dead wood. If they keep it in the house to build a house or a roof, it's okay. It doesn't go to the atmosphere, it's still in the form of material, isn't it? It's not a gas, it's a steel material. The issue is if they collect the dead wood to burn it, to cook, then when they burn the dead wood to cook, yeah, it turns gas, it goes to the atmosphere. So dead wood is not a problem on itself. It depends what we do with it or what happens to it. That It may be a problem, it might be stored, it might be there for a long time. But if we burn it, it might go back to the atmosphere pretty quickly. Uh -huh. And what I would like to ask next is, is it that tissue effective? We, Sorry. from those countries, we're looking for development and we do not have any other sources. For Wait, it. we'll talk about red in a second. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I have seen that in the presentation, mm -hmm. showed that Europe is gaining more forests 
Uh -huh. uh, it has uh, cut the forests a bit, but now it is gaining more. Uh -huh. While Africa uh, is losing, yeah. and, um, Latin America they are losing. Mm -hmm. Especially in, in Africa and in Latin America, they are least developing countries. Uh -huh. I guess the reason for uh, losing the forest is development and land use change. Mm -hmm. change mostly developed. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, Actually, Europe is developed, a developed country, mm -hmm. a continent. Mm -hmm. So, what are, are they are they doing? What did they do to to maintain high forest high? And what can uh, so that we can learn from them? Uh -huh. I think it's a very good question. <coughs> so, what happened? The question was like, what happened in Europe that we can see it's been an in, instead of deforesting, it's reforesting. They're increasing their forest cover. And uh, what can be done in the south to help? not only just lose less, but maybe increase. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer, it's um, the different answers is one of them is development. Eh? Instead of cooking with firewood, if we can cook with electricity or other ways, that helps. Eh? That's one of the things that helped a lot. I mean, I can give as an example, I come from a small village in the mountains in Spain. And my grandfather always says that when he was a kid, there was no tree to be seen mm -hmm. because people were still cooking with firewood. Now you go to the village and it's a small forest. It's not big, it's a small, but it's a forest. So I think there's different things. The fact that people stop cooking with firewood, maybe they stop also building with sticks and now they build with bricks. Mm -hmm. And we, so it's different process, but I think, I mean, I, I didn't want to talk a lot about it, but I, I think the, the most interesting part of that figure, I don't know if we can go forward, yeah. is Asia. Because yeah, Asia, um, yeah, I mean, some countries in Asia are doing better than others, but I think this is the most interesting part of this figure. What did they do that in a decade they managed to go from deforestation to yeah. such a big reforestation? Mm. And I think, I mean, there's different reasons there, but one of them is the fact that China, there was very strong policy to stop deforestation and start reforestation. <coughs> but of course, there's some things that you can change, like the firewood or your construction materials, there's some other things, like your furniture, mm -hmm. that it might just be a displacement. Maybe you source your timber for furniture and other purposes elsewhere. And here we can have another whole day discussion about it, because this is partially what the Chinese are doing in Africa. So sometimes it's not just about changing what you do, you can also change where you find it. And then it looks good on you. So. Any more? Should we move to the next one on carbon projects? <laughs>